Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it's time for a dynamic effort bench press day. But a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Uh, today I went back to the straight bar, and actually I decided to do everything wide grip, which means I didn't even do pinkies on the rings. I decided to go basically ring finger on the rings, which is a fairly wide grip because I want to keep working on that. And I used a lot of chain weight used a lot of chain weight. Uh, I, it's over 100 pounds. Again, I need to go back and check my notes, which you guys will see down below. You know, people always ask that, like, how much weight is all of this? It's, it's all listed underneath each workout in the description box. But we did five sets of five. Uh, again, trying to explode as hard as we can. And yes, I'm sticking with pausing now, pausing on my speed work on the bench, uh, but because I feel like I get better control, uh, easier correct touch point, and I can explode a little bit harder. But yeah, so we're going with a lot of chains. A lot of chains right now. And I was happy with this. I felt like my chest and front delts and everything got a tremendous amount of activation. They were lit up from this, relatively happy with the bar speeds. Um, they could always be faster, could always be faster. But again, I'm not using a lot of bar weight, you know, because uh, again, I'm focusing on the chains at this point. So we're using a lot of chains. I only had 145 on the bar. And since next week is the last week of the chain wave, I might try to take that up to 155, right? And, but we'll, we'll assess it. We'll assess it. I feel like I personally get much better bar speeds on the benching by keeping the weight pretty moderate, uh, by staying under 50% of my bench max, right? And it tends to do well for me. But the point is, even if we go a little bit above, as long as we focus on exploding hard and we're at pretty, pretty good percentages, it's probably fine. Now, doing bent over rows, and some people have asked why straps and why aren't you being super strict? Because I'm just worried about the stretch and I'm worried about getting deadlift carryover on these. I am always including a stricter row. Like today, I decided to work with seal rows more. Uh, as I've worked with a few different rows, if I had to narrow down which ones I really feel the most activation on in a different way, it's going to be these sort of rows with the straps and then seal rows. And I can probably grip this weight. I just can't pull it as explosively. I'd have to focus so much more on trying to squeeze the bar that it's a problem. I mean, I can rip out 225 easy, which you guys have seen me do without straps for these. Not a problem, even holding on to it. The issue is, again, I don't want it to become an issue because I do train my grip so much, especially after a deadlift day. Uh, and I'm doing a lot of grip work right now. I'm doing dead hangs multiple times a day. I'm now doing the axle bar work. My grip is fine. I don't personally need rows to help. If you're a noob who's trying to build your base grip strength, you need to not strap up for these, right? Do not strap up for these. I already can grip all over 600 pounds on the deadlift and I'm trying to get stronger at it. So at this point, I'm not worried about grip from rows, right? Not worried about it. All right, dumbbell presses went good today. One of my sets I didn't get centered correctly, but I still managed to get my target reps. So we're still using the 104s. Although, it might be time to try to bump these up again here shortly. Why? Because I got 11 reps. Final set, I got 11 reps. Now, I'd like to replicate that on an ME day. I'd like to replicate it on an ME day and see if we can to keep pushing these up. But man, these are, these are challenging enough that I'm not worried about progression. I really feel like I need the dumbbell presses in. And as long as I'm getting limit sets and we see at least some weight increase over time, which we've seen actually good weight increase, I'm not overly worried if I get stuck with the same weight for two or three weeks. Now, we could make the case that if I am though, and I really need to rotate it, I might try my decline bench. I, don't, I have never used my decline bench on my adjustable bench ever for anything. I think it has a decline setting. I'm pretty sure it does. I need to double check that. I think it does. You know, I could mess with some decline dumbbells. I prescribe them to my clients, right? It's good for the goose, good for the gander. Some of my clients are like, yeah, you give them to me, coach. In fact, you made me do decline and flat on a max effort day after maxing. Yes, I did. Sorry, Charles. But you know what? Your bench is going up. Why are you crying? All right, back over to mine, though. Again, that pause on the last one at the bottom and got 11. Very happy with that. Seal rows. I tried a new weight. My sheet said I did 190 last time. I think I did, but I might have got more than 10 reps on it. So I went with 195. 
you know, these were hard, but they were good. The first set was harder than the next two because I got my position a little bit better. Got my chin a little further over. I, I have to stack the boxes completely perfect. Like you guys notice, my bench has to be right at the edge. Not so much you could tip over, so like the, the edge of the bench is still not past the edge of that box. It's perfectly lined up to give me a little more clearance. It's the only way I can get my chin over the edge of the bench without hitting that box. But, again, the lat and, and upper back activation on these is phenomenal. Like, as far as feeling like my lats and rear delts and everything, feel a lot on this movement. It's one of the reasons I like it so much. Whereas, and I do feel a lot of hamstring and I do feel more trap and everything. Uh, on the standing row there keep in mind they're still hitting all the middle and upper backs just that i get some posterior chain on the standing one but it's a different emphasis the grip is stricter well the grip is wider on this than the other it's stricter so it's the good combination these two together work very well for building my whole back right and, and again there's a whole tendency there like i've got certain things involved with that that i would say there's a combination of lifts there i'm using to build my deadlift those represent the other end of the extreme then we, we roll back down and then we have the romanian deadlift which is closer to the standing one and then i have my glute ham raises all right i decided to only because i've got the recovery right now i'm mess, going to mess with a third press it's going to be one that's easier on recovery i decided to do the cambered bar now you guys saw the study and discussion i linked on my facebook fitness page earlier this week and those of you who are like well i didn't well go check it's there i linked a, st a study on this because I rarely do that I'm never gonna link studies on YouTube get over it I got a strike for it before it's not going to happen I had to get that strike overturned eight times over and over and over they would restrike me two weeks later I would appeal it again and win and I kept having a video video deleted with a temporary strike over a study before and I don't link studies and I really don't care what you think I'll link them occasionally and discuss them on the on the Facebook page because I've never got blocked or a strike on Facebook for linking a study that YouTube has. I'm not risking my channel because you guys are too lazy to use Google. Get over it. But what's the point here with these front delt exercise? And I want that deep stretch at the bottom. Now I took the final set out more and I got 15 reps and I realized how bad I'm sandbagging. So I do need to increase the weight on these, but we need to be very, very careful. Uh, a, it's a way for me to get a bench specific press that hits the front delts a little bit more hits the front delts a little bit more right because most of my rest of my bench training is is a little more pec and tricep oriented i just want to make sure the front delts are getting some bench specific work all right now i'm only doing three single joint exercises at this point I've realized where does, where does my real efforts need to be on these, the incline curls or some sort of curl, and I like the incline for now. Uh, again, because of the stretch reflex, I can always replace it with, with barbell curls. All right, I went with 40s. I got three sets of 10 with 40s. We're getting stronger on the dumbbell stuff, which makes me happy. You know, we've been slowly bringing it up, but I got 40s for 10 on all of my dumbbell movements, which again, I'm picking movements that let me do that. And again, the rear delt flyer is a little cheap involved. It's not ultra strict and that's okay. For our purposes, it's fine because it is hammering the muscles that we need to hit in the whole upper back, including the posterior delts. But the incline curls, these felt good. And I think this gives me right around the amount of bicep volume I need with all the rowing I'm doing. Now, if we count rows as half sets, and we should, it gives me six sets for biceps per upper day, 12 a week. It's all we need. In fact, there's some data that shows that biceps actually have a little lower volume tolerance, some of the muscles of the upper body. Number two, I don't want my tendons inflamed. I do a lot of heavy mixed grip pulling. I need enough bicep work to get bicep growth and to build those tendons. I don't want tendon inflammation when I'm deadlifting heavy all the time or at least once a week, all right? Not worth it to me. So then I did my rear delt flies and I alternated them. It's not a true superset because I, I could do a little bit of setup in between them with my tricep extensions just to save time because while I'm recovering, you know, if I'm gonna take three minutes between sets, which I do, because again, I notice I'm doing limit sets on these, so I'm not dropping reps down. I'm giving myself three minutes between these, even these small single joint movements because at this point, the volume is fairly low on them. I need every set to maximize stimulation. Right? It's what we need. 
The only thing that was fairly low stimulus today is that camber bar bench because it's a little bit different of a beast and it's being done as a finishing press. Everything else I, I need maximum benefit from every single set because I'm only doing three sets. I need every one of them to count. So the long, it lets me get longer breaks and shave time off because otherwise it, it's taking me, you know, 20, 25 minutes to finish up with these two movements and I want to get it done in 10. And so that's why I did it that way, just to finish up quicker. But we got 40s for 10s on all of them. And I felt my whole upper back and rear delts on these good and the triceps. Really, I'd say the ones that I felt super hard today, though, were the, the tricep exercises. I thought the incline curls hit hard in my biceps. Biceps were really pumped. When I walked by the mirror after a big bicep vein coming out, it was, it was working. But when I got to the triceps, I really felt that extra two and a half pounds in those dumbbells. I really felt it today. The tricep extensions, these were money. Hey, and we know my triceps need to come up. I mean, visually, if you look, actually, my tricep is smaller than my bicep. I need them for benching. And really, the whole point here is getting the long head. And again, that same study I linked, there's some discussion there. I'll have other videos in that discussion that looks at a lot of the, the research between max benching versus rep benching, muscle activation, hypertrophy, tricep hypertrophy on presses versus extensions. There's a lot of good stuff. There's a reason we need extensions. The reason we need extensions to help with our max bench, it will benefit you. It'll help you get that last 10 to 20 pounds on a big bench. It really will. But it's the long head that we're looking at there with some of those extensions. And it's something that we look closer at the data Everyone who's like, oh, different extensions hit the different heads vastly different. That's not necessarily as true as you think from a hypertrophy perspective. It really isn't. Most extensions hit the long head harder than presses do. And that's the whole point. And they hypertrophy it more. And that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at is hypertrophying that long head for its carryover to your max bench. Because the max bench uses the long head, but rep work doesn't use it as much. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.